All right, so Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz is continuing to cry and fart and piss in his pants at the prospect of his workers continuing in this ongoing nationwide campaign to unionize their workplaces and engage in collective action to make demands for better pay, better benefits, better working conditions, etc. And we've talked about the numerous different, in many cases, illegal union busting tactics that Starbucks has been engaged in, but now they're going with a different strategy slightly here uh, by actually trying to offer offer better benefits to ununionized workers as an effort to very clearly try to push back against this ongoing unionization movement. So here from CNBC, they say Starbucks is weighing better benefits for employees, but say that they could exclude, uh, it could exclude union workers. So let's go ahead and get into some of the details here. They say Starbucks campaign to dissuade baristas from unionizing could, in could include extending new benefits exclusively to non-union workers. I wonder what this is about. The company CEO, Howard Schultz, told U.S. store leaders this week that he is reviewing the coffee chain's benefit program for its workers. However, employees who work at the company-owned stores that voted to unionize would be ineligible for those improved benefits, Schultz said. So what's his explanation here? He says, Schultz cited federal labor law and advice from the company's legal counsel in saying that it would be illegal to extend benefits unilaterally with unionized locations in the equation. So he's saying that it's illegal. Okay, well, is it? They say the Wall Street Journal first reported his comments, and they say under federal labor law, employers have to bargain with the union that represents their workers when it comes to changes in compensation, benefits, or other terms of their employment, but companies can still ask unionized employees if they want additional benefits. And they say U.S. airlines, for example, are highly unionized and have offered union employees bonuses or extra pay to help with staffing shortages, incentives that fall outside the regular contract negotiations. So in other words, he's just fucking lying and they obviously could extend these uh, benefits that they're apparently going to be offering to unionizing workers. There's absolutely no problem there as long as the unionized workers uh, were willing to accept those benefits. So he's completely lying and it's very clear exactly what his intentions are here, right? <clears throat> the intentions here are to exclude the union workers from these new benefits, whatever they may be offered to these workers, uh, in order to try to dissuade people from joining the union. I mean, it's unambiguously a strategy of union busting, in this case, in a somewhat positive direction because yeah you might be offering them better benefits to non-unionized employees but the purpose of that in the long run is obviously to prevent people from joining a union where they would then actually be able to leverage collective action in the form of strikes or other you know collective bargaining agreements to demand even better benefits than what is going to be offered to these unionized employees so it's it's very obvious or to these uh, ununionized employees it's very obvious that they don't have good intentions no capitalist enterprise would ever have good intentions for their work workers. In fact, they have a direct financial incentive to reduce the benefits, reduce the pay, reduce the uh, quality of the work environment because that increases their profit margins. It increases their uh, returns to their shareholders, which is their only priority in this entire equation. So the extent to which they would be willing to increase benefits for non-unionized workers would obviously in the long run uh, only result in a situation where those workers, you may get an immediate benefit in the very short-term sense from these benefits, but in the long run, the point is that you don't join a union where well, you would then be able to engage in that collective action to demand even better benefits than what he's going to be offering to these workers right now. But they continue with a little bit of context here as to why he's so terrified of unions. They say roughly 200 of Starbucks company owned locations have filed the paperwork to unionize in recent months. And to date, 18 stores have voted to unionize under Workers United with only one cafe so far voting against. So almost complete clean, uh, clean sweep here. But they say as the union push gains momentum, Workers United has alleged that the company has engaged in union busting activity, including firing organizers, cutting barista hours at unionizing locations and other forms of retaliation. And in March, the National Labor Relations Board filed a complaint against Starbucks, alleging that it violated federal labor law by firing organizers at a Phoenix location. So we've talked about on this channel a couple different ways how uh, Biden's National Relations Board or a National Labor Relations Board has actually been somewhat good and has been actually uh, ramping up their offensive against corporations who engage in rampant union busting activities. And there was the uh, Silk, uh, Silk I forget what it was, the Silk something doctrine that I talked about in a video last week, uh, where essentially they're looking to now ban collective or uh, ban uh, captive audience meetings at a lot of these different locations at whether it's Amazon or Starbucks. So they're taking positive action. And in this case, uh, you know, actually suing 
suing Starbucks for illegally firing some of these workers. So it's great to see the NLRB actually take even a, a, a stance that is not aggressively anti-worker in this case. But the result of this is obviously a, a massive wave of unionization attempts at all of these different Starbucks locations. But again, you see exactly what the priorities here. And I think a couple uh, different takes here pretty much summarize it perfectly. So here from uh, Chris Brooks, he said, corrected headline, union poised to win a raise for all unionized workers at Starbucks. So again, he wouldn't be offering these benefits to these ununionized workers if it wasn't for the threat of unionization, which he knows and the rest of Starbucks corporate understand would in the long run return better benefits, better pay, better working conditions for all Star Starbucks workers. And it wouldn't be conditional on some, you know, CEO uh, shitting his pants and being fearful of that dynamic right there. So, you know, accurate headline there, union poised to win raise raises for all unorganized uh, workers at Starbucks. So again, credit to the unionized workers for uh, making this actually happen. But uh, Crystal Ball here, I think, had a great take on this. She says, this is a nasty and vindictive tactic that shows you the billionaire class will go to any and every length uh, to maintain absolute power and control over their workers. We stand with you, SB Workers United. And, uh, you know, obviously case goes same for me. But if you guys want to go and look at local uh, locations around you and your city, uh, I'll link this down below. This is a great website that's been put together by More Perfect Union. They've been uh, really tracking a lot of these different unionization attempts, not just at Starbucks, but also Amazon and, uh, you know, Kellogg's and all of these other, other different uh, John Deere went on strike and they've, they've been covering all of these different labor movement uh, issues really well and really closely. But they basically put together an entire list of all of the different locations around the United States where Starbucks workers are attempting to unionize. So if you live in any of these cities, you know, go show up, show them some love and uh, show solidarity with them. We've got to do everything that we can in order to make sure that this this nationwide movement continues, because at the end of the day, uh, they all understand. And this is why they're d doing these tactics right now, not just the union busting tactics, but even going to the extent of offering uh, ununionized employees better benefits. It's all just a part of this union busting process where CEOs, shareholders, executives are absolutely terrified at the prospect of workers engaging in collective action to where they would actually have the leverage to make demands instead of, you know, begging for crumbs from CEO Howard Schultz. They would actually be in position with the union to make demands of Starbucks uh, for better pay, better benefits, uh, better working conditions, etc. So that's the lesson at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, all credit to these Starbucks workers who are continuing to push against this. We've seen, you know, different workers be fired and be retaliated against. So, you know, it really takes a lot for people to stand up and risk their jobs and risk their livelihoods to uh, do something like this. But all solidarity with everybody who is continuing in this movement. And uh, I hope they continue in this offensive assault as, uh, you know, as uh, CEO Howard Schultz previously described it.